Well, let's go ahead and continue on and get into your number five. My number five is Rogue One, a Star Wars story. And um, this movie was better than it should have been, especially oh, yeah. given how much I hate just generic fan service for the sake <laughs> of fan service. That being said, this movie was so good that it allowed me to be like, I didn't realize I want this fan service, but I'm happy it's here. Like that scene at the mm-hmm. end with Darth Vader, I was like, I didn't oh. know I wanted this. Oh my God, this is amazing. That whole scene was great. The way it connected together, when you actually see, you know, the the X fight, the X wing fighters come in, and you see mm-hmm. like legit clips that were cleaned up from obvious like outtakes from the original trilogy. You're just mm-hmm. like, holy shit! I didn't realize that we'd actually see these guys again. It was really cool, yep. but it is a kind of shitty story. It has kind of shitty protagonist who really just gets pushed along through the entire narrative. There's no reason for her to be there. There's no reason for her to take charge. Um, there's a lot of narrative problems with things getting dropped. That guy, he says, oh, if this thing tends to make people go mad, but we'll not actually yeah. have him go mad. And there's just so many things where it just felt, when you look back, like in the moment, it's fine. But when you look back, you realize this is just not a narratively strong movie. And it, it literally is just held up like a like a, like a a marionette by all of the aspects of the universe that help it. And that's about it. But it's fun. And I still think it's stronger than Solo. Simply, even though it doesn't have as strong of a character as Solo, I feel like this one justifies its existence a bit more just by virtue of the fact that it segues cleanly into A New Hope. I really honestly think, you know, like I said, my son, he's he's, he's just about to turn five. I can honestly see myself never, ever showing him one, two, and three and instead using it from Rogue One forward. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it does a better job setting up a new hope than than uh, the the prequels do, and it does a better job at giving us a sense of Darth Vader than the prequels do. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely agree. Jen Urso is she's just kind of there, and I wanted uh, to like her a lot. I love that yeah, actress. She's just kind of she happens to be the daughter of the dude that designed it. And uh, everything with Saw. I, I I wonder if he was originally supposed to be Saw Guerrera from the, the Clone Wars cartoons. I'm wondering if that was not just kind of shoehorned in later for more connective tissue. I don't know exactly. Uh, but I do know they went in and reshot a bunch of stuff with yeah, Forrest Whitaker. They, they, were, they were shot like 50% of the movie. Period. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, his his had a lot to do with that. They even changed like his hair and his facial hair or something. Like yeah. the first trailer, he looks different than he does in the second one. Right. I forget which one um, it is, but I know one point he has like frizzy hair and another mm-hmm. point. Or actually, that I think was a, the flashback point. Maybe I'm wrong. Never mind. Forget I can't remember. Thing. Yeah. I remember it, it changes in the in I've the, seen in this the movie trailer once. too. So. This is the really? only, only Star only Wars once? movie I've seen once. The only one. And the one I don't have any desire to go back to. I would, I would, I would challenge you to just to, just to feel it. Go and watch it. Find find yourself a good solid five and a half hours, however much you need, and watch Rogue One, and then go right into A New Hope. I will say, I I did try again once all the way through. I I got about thirty minutes in, and I just turned it off the second time, <laughs> and I was just like, eh, I'm okay. Um, it does have that great scene at the end, like you said. That's complete fan service, mm-hmm. uh, almost kind of like making up for what we got from Anakin in the prequels. Yeah, that's exactly what we wanted out of uh, the Revenge of the Sith, something like that. Yeah, we never got. And it. I will, I will say this: uh, that scene uh, really reminded me of the first arc of um, uh, the Darth Vader comic book when Marvel. Uh, rebooted that when they when they started that and that's supposed to be canon. Uh, it's this badass Darth Vader that can just destroy whatever he wants to. It's it's wonderful and so that was kind of seeing that Darth Vader come to life and I appreciated that. I will say this: um, it might be time to find a voice actor if we're gonna keep using Vader. Yeah, a new voice actor. He's sounding old. He's starting to sound old, and that's nothing against the great James Earl Jones. He is an amazing voice actor. He is Darth Vader, but you could hear it. You could hear it in this one more so than even the the prequels. Yeah. Uh, so Rogue One's a little bit higher on my list. Uh, that was your number five, so we'll go ahead and continue. Any, any last words from you on it? Nah. Okay. Uh, so my number five is The Force Awakens. Okay. I'm not sure how much hate I'll get for that one. Look, The Force Awakens was a soft reboot. Is that a good way to put it? Do yeah. you agree? 
Yeah. Okay? Soft reboot. Let's reintroduce this world. Let's have enough for the old fans to say yay and enough for new fans to go ooh. And it worked. Uh, I remember seeing it opening night uh, with my wife. It was great. I remember cheering uh, when the crawl hit. And I remember thinking that first line, you know, this will begin to set things right. <laughs> In the back of my mind, I'm like, is that a jab? I think that might be a jab at Lucas. It might be a jab at Lucas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I enjoyed it the first time through. I, I really did. I hated Kylo Ren being named Ben. Hated it with a passion. I feel throughout the entire original trilogy, neither Han Solo nor Leia Organa has enough of a connection to Obi-Wan Kenobi themselves to name their kid Ben. Unless... You brought up, yes. Sorry, you brought up that they... Yeah, I was going to say, you brought up that maybe they were like, hey, Luke, why don't you pick the name? Because families do lit. Important family members pick the names of kids. So maybe that is there, but I still, he didn't have to be Jason. I'm not such an EU purist for these new movies that he had to be Jason and, and Ray to be Jaina. No, they, they could have done, his name could have been Kylo. I just hated when Han Solo goes, Ben, I'm like, oh God, it took me out of the moment for a uh, movie for a moment. Um, visually stunning. I love all the practical effects. Um, it just, every time I've viewed it since, I'm less excited about it. Does that make sense? It makes sense, even if I don't yeah. agree with it, but it makes sense. It, it just, it, because it was played so safe, it's like, yeah, I can sit down and watch this movie, but I don't enjoy it as much as I did the first time. Yeah. And I think I've hit a plateau towards like, I don't think I'll ever walk up to my DVD Blu-ray case and pick it out and put it in. But if my, my son wants to watch it, I'll watch it with him. Mm. And and that's that's pretty much what I got to say about the Force Awakens. It's it's a soft reboot. It served a purpose. I think if they had built their entire trilogy plan around what they had started there, we would be having a different conversation with Episode Eight and what we're going into with Episode Nine. But as many of us fans out there, including those of us here at LRM, have discussed, it's obvious Disney had no cohesive plan. And I think when you look at the Force Awakens uh, with the Last Jedi. I think that hurts it even more because it does feel so by itself. So Star Wars The Force Awakens is my number four. I figure I may as well jump into it. Okay. Um, I actually feel kind of the opposite about you. Like I enjoyed it. I liked it the first time. But this to me is one of the most rewatchable Star Wars movies these days for me. Um, I could just throw it on and enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. has a lot of great scenes to it. Um, I love the characterizations. Kylo Ren is Anakin Skywalker done right. He's very mm -hmm. intimidating. I think the scenes where he's losing his tantrum are both funny and terrifying. If you just see what mm -hmm. he did to that wall of panels, it's like, oh, that's a terrifying villain. I was never interested in Snoke. I thought Snoke was the least interesting part of it. But I was like, of course they have to have a big guy pulling the strings. So sure, I'll go with it. We'll see where this goes. Um, yeah, it was just all around was a, a very solid, well-executed, well-directed, reboot that helped capture the essence of what made the original film so special and even had that it, it felt like a tangible world again um that i that that aspect i really enjoyed and i, I don't think it could be under underplay just how important that was for these movies was to feel tangible oh, yeah. again and um something about it just there's there's some there's some heft to it that i i really like and um it may not be original but if you are comparing the original and this one side by side, I think they're both objectively strong. But if you're looking at them and you take away the nostalgia and the importance of A New Hope, I think this one is probably a stronger movie. Um, but obviously it doesn't have like the same impact at all. And it came decades later. I do I do have a, a couple of, uh, I, I, I don't know if you want to call them story element issues. Uh, first off, the whole, and, and they I know they tried to address some of this in their new canon mm -hmm. uh, books. The whole reason why the Resistance is separate from the New Republic, uh, the fact that the New Republic is not centered at Coruscant upset me, and the fact that they had their entire fleet around one planet that just <laughs> happened to be, you know, uh, not Coruscant, and was uh, what the Starkiller base shot at first and destroyed all of the, the New Republic fleet. I, d I didn't like that. That felt too convenient to me. Um, 
I do think that J.J. Abrams truly loves Star Wars and that this movie was everything it needed to be. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have nothing really more to say to it, say about it. That was my number four. So my number four will be Return of the Jedi. Uh, we discussed it a little bit already. I love, love Return of the Jedi. Like I said, some of the most emotional moments. And I'm not even including, you know, just for once, let me look at you with my own eyes. Um that is, of course, a very, very emotional scene. But I'm telling you guys that that hallway scene right after Luke turns himself in, it's great. The opening with uh, Jabba and everything. And let me say this. Hold on about these. Uh, oh, man, I just hit my microphone. <laughs> Too excited. Yeah. Let me, let me say this about the original trilogy. I only watch one version of it. I got lucky enough that I bought the, the, I think it's the only set of DVDs with the theatrical releases. Mm -hmm. um, I bought them back in 2005 or 2006, I think it was. And I mean, it's like the fourth or fifth time I've purchased the original trilogy at that point. I had like the old, old VHS tapes that my parents recorded on HBO. Then I had the original VHS tapes and I got special edition VHS tapes. And anyways, um, so that's all I watch. I've seen the de-specialized versions. Uh, which are fine. They definitely look and sound better than the original theatrical cuts. But I can't watch the Blu-rays. I've tried. the All of the changes... Look, the very original changes made in the special edition were not that bad. If you go back and you watch, because especially A New Hope, it was mostly just expanding things. Well, the Java uh, scene. scene. The Java scene was there. It didn't really bother me as much as it bothers others. Uh, and then same thing with Empire Strikes Back, but they went a little bit too far with the changes they made in Return of the Jedi. Uh, so I watched the original cuts. I watched the original theatrical versions. Uh, maybe that informs some of something about this. I don't know. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But another great thing about Return of the Jedi is... Is the space battle i think the space mm. battle there is one of the best out of all of them um you've got the 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 capital ships firing at each other you got the death star taking on capital ships you got great dog fights uh you've got wedge until he's in there one of my favorite characters from the eu and uh it's it's such a great space battle um they did a good oh, yeah. job of, of making a really potentially complex battle really easy to follow Yes, yes, and because you got three things going on, you got Luke in the throne room, you've got uh, Ewoks and and Solo's team on the moon, and then you got the space battle with Lando and Wedge and Admiral Ackbar, and uh, I I love all of that. Uh, like I said, the Ewoks can grate on me sometimes. It just kind of depends on what mood I'm in, I guess. But the emotions in that movie they feed so well off of what we learn in Empire Strikes Back. Especially that last scene where, where Vader's kind of contacting Luke through the Force uh, right after Luke has uh, been saved by, by uh, Lando and Leia. And I think those two movies feed into each other a lot better than uh, 4 feeds into 5. And I do. I love Return of the Jedi. It's, it's one of those ones that I can pop in. And as long as I don't have to listen to the uh, big musical number from the special edition, I'm pretty happy. So, yeah, yeah, that's As that's I mentioned why. before for me... Um thematically i think it's great um maybe i just watched it too many times but to me it's it's the most boring of the original trilogy that goes a little too long yeah not sure why just doesn't uh doesn't click with me as much it just feels not as belovedly crafted yeah. as the first two i can i can i can wholeheartedly disagree with you <laughs> <laughs> all righty so here we are we're into our top three woohoo uh, this is it this is so it. Let's get to it. All number right. Number three. My number three. And I went back and forth on this a lot. The Empire Strikes Back is mm. my number three. Send the hate towards our boss. Yes. You guys, yeah. Joseph at LRMOnline.com. <laughs> I know. Keep in mind, these are movies like we're at the point where we love all these yes. movies. So Yes, absolutely. Um, it's the just top five, definitely. It's just little things here and there. Uh, but uh, for me, it's not a complete story. It doesn't, it feels like, uh, which is fine. You know, these movies, movies have become a part where right now it's almost like a giant TV show with a lot of franchises. So I don't feel like it's, maybe it's not fair for me to judge it like that. But at the end of the day, you can't watch this movie without just wanting to watch the next one. It doesn't hold up completely by itself. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that works to its detriment a bit in my mind where 
it just doesn't feel like I'm getting a full complete experience. It feels like I'm getting the start of something really promising and the start of something really dark and interesting, but it doesn't quite get there. And then when it's followed yeah. up with uh, Return of the Jedi, it doesn't quite pay off in the same in, in the way that I was hoping. And it almost mm. retroactively to me makes Empire just a slight bit weaker because it doesn't live up to the promise that was created here. And uh, I appreciate the movie quite a bit for it taking things in unexpected directions. You know, Cloud City was really beautiful. Um, the Yoda stuff, obviously very iconic. And uh, Hoth, one of the, the greatest fight scenes ever. I remember, oh, yeah. I remember, you know, listening to the soundtrack Battle of Hoth scene, that whole like 14 minute, I think, track mm -hmm. um, was my favorite theme growing up. I loved it. I loved playing that. And um, was it Shadows of the Empire? Was that it? Was that this the one where you play in that one? Or? The book, the game? Yeah, the game. Which, yeah. Was it Shadows of the Empire with that one where it starts off there? And then I you, believe so, yes. Yeah, and uh, I remember playing that a lot. So I was really, really That's into That's the one on this. Nintendo 64, right? Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, I, I can't say enough good things about it. Everyone knows why this movie is great. It brought in... It managed to give you more Star Wars by also giving you different Star Wars and mm -hmm. by actually delving more and developing these characters more. It also did the crazy thing of letting the secondary characters have romantic interest and not the main character, mm -hmm. which I thought was refreshing. And yes. um, the whole Luke, or not Luke, I'm your father, but the whole I'm your father thing was great for the time. I don't think it would hold up as much nowadays because it seems too random. But it was definitely amazing for the time and definitely a, a huge milestone in, in American storytelling and cinema that is, is remembered for ever and it will be remembered forever. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, there are a couple things here and there that are just nitpick. You know, why did Luke jump? It's weird that he jumped and then happened to land in like an area that slides down and it happened to lead out to a random antenna. Like I didn't yeah, quite. He understand. was reaching out with the force. <laughs> I guess so. Reaching Just out. The, everything's the force. Everything is the force. So there, are, there are little nitpicks here and there. And at the end of the day, I don't think it it creates a great foundation for promising things to come. But it because it ends once those promises are made, it never pays them off completely. Um, I think that's it. I mean, that's why it's number three and not number two or one for me. Yeah. I can I can see that and yeah it definitely does not stand on its own you know a new hope can stand on its own mm -hmm. uh, if if it had not done well as Lucas and Fox had hoped it's it's got a beginning a middle and an end a yeah. new hope is a standalone film Empire Strikes Back absolutely is not you almost need a little bit of a new hope and then definitely need Return of the Jedi, uh, whether like you said you don't think it paid off as well as you'd hoped, uh, but definitely it doesn't feel complete on its own um like i said iconic uh definitely one of the biggest twists there ever was in cinema up to that point um there's still people today that can tell you about when they learned that vader was luke's dad you know um it's uh it's it's been a a talking point for so many conversations about uh star wars before the prequels you know when all we had were these three three movies and a and a, a dozen or so books to go off of um it's a little bit higher on my list so we'll uh carry on with my number three unless you got anything else before we go nah no go for it no. all right so my number three is rogue one um, I liked, I liked the fan service. <laughs> I had a blast with this movie. We went out and saw it in theaters, uh, after I moved, uh, to where I moved at now. Um, it's one of the first movies I saw once we got out here. Um, and, uh, got the, the, the boy, my son, we got him a babysitter, me and the wife go off. And my wife is, I'm lucky enough. I, I got a wife that loves this stuff. Um, it's it's great. <laughs> it's all right to be jealous of me. Most people are. Um, <laughs> so we go out to see this movie, and from the beginning, yeah, I can I can feel some of the blandness about it, but I love the way it looks, and mm -hmm. I really like how we're not we're getting away from the Skywalker stuff, 
And yeah. even though Vader is in it, he's not a focus. He's definitely in there for fan service. And I liked uh, when when we were talking about, not we, but when uh, the internet was learning that it was going to be kind of like a war movie and it was going to be different. I really liked that aspect. I wish it was a little bit more of a war movie. I wish there was a little bit more combat in it. Uh, visually, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. Um then we get to Scarif, and I think there's a lot of fun excitement in there. And the soundtrack, the first time I listened to it, uh, first time when I saw the movie, I wasn't too impressed. But going back, uh, the the piece, the score over Scarif is actually a pretty decent one. Um, I'll give the I'll give the guy some credit. Michael you know Gicino? who I would, Yeah, I think that. Yeah, that's it. I tell you, one composer I would love to see on a Star Wars movie. Wait, let me guess. Dipla. No, actually, I was going to say Bear McCrary. Who's that? Uh, he did Battlestar Galactica. Oh, okay. I would love to see his take on the Star Wars universe. He's done other things as well. I can't name a whole bunch of but the biggest one that I know he's known uh, known for is uh, Battlestar Galactica, uh, the re- reimagining of it. The, yeah, the a lot of drums. La- last one. Yes, and I think he could have an interesting take. He's got a lot of like Celtic pieces and Celtic influence in some of the uh, Battlestar pieces, um, including a song called Wander My Friends, which I think is sung in Gaelic. Um, I'm not sure if it's Scottish or Irish, but anyways, um, I would love to hear his take on a Star Wars movie. But Rogue One, it had... It was, like you said, absolutely not needed. I'm one of those people that's tired of constantly being in uh, in between episodes three and four. I'm, I'm sick and tired of it. There's so much more about Star Wars. And yet this need... is your number three. And this is my number three. That just <laughs> talks about how great of a movie it was to me. Okay. Um, yeah. But it, it absolutely, like you said, it was unnecessary. But we got it. It was great. I love the the two guys that that are belong to the uh, cult of Wills. I can't remember what they call it in the movie, but it, it, it's a throwback to when uh, Luke Skywalker was writing some of the first stories, uh, the Journal of Wills, and uh, his first ideas for Star Wars. And they it's it's got a lot of Easter eggs and a lot of fun fan service into it. It was just a blast of a movie. I, yeah, the protagonist is bland. There's a lot of stuff that happens just to move the story along. But one thing I like about this movie that they did not have the balls to do with a lot of other things they've done with Star Wars, they realize that they can't explain why none of these characters are in 4, 5, or 6. So what do they do? Kill them all. Yeah. I'm happy they had the balls to do that. I remember watching it and seeing uh, (laughs) seeing, uh, Cassian and Jin sort of hobble over to the beach and thinking, how the fuck are they going to escape? And then Mm, they didn't. And I was like, oh, they did it. Oh, my God. They actually did it. Which is unlike Solo, uh, which, which kept is why people alive. <laughs> when people kept saying, "Oh, Star Wars is being Disneyfied," fuck you. Star Wars hasn't been darker than it has in mm-hmm. recent years, in my opinion. Like, yep. I just don't understand people like Disneyfication. They're doing this and that and Porgs and blah blah. I'm like, bitch, Ewoks. Like, yeah. Like, look at anything that's in the prequel. Like, they actually had balls to make really consequential decis- decisions yeah. and. I'll talk about this in the next one. But yeah, basically (laughs) they've been able to make things really matter in these movies, even if it's like a side story like this. Yep. So I was, I was happy with that. So that's my number three. So uh, go ahead. Hit number two. My number two, Star Wars, the last Jedi. Um, I'll go back to kind of what I was segueing into. People talk about the Mm -hmm. Um, This movie was dark. And yeah, people say, yeah. oh, it was funny and I didn't like the comedy. It's like, yeah, but it also, for me, had some of the biggest impact in a Star Wars movie I'd seen in a long time. I remember I, I had just, um, well, not just, a couple months prior to that, we had seen Thor Ragnarok. And I enjoy mm. Thor Ragnarok, but I remember at the end of the day feeling like, man, a lot of important shit happened in that movie, but it just got glossed over. Yeah. Like, it got really glossed over to the point where, like, it didn't matter And it just felt like I felt empty inside because of the way they treated it. And then I came into The Last Jedi, and things happened, and it had impact, and it was crazy good. Uh, And I felt there was a fullness to it that had been lacking for me. And, like, it it allowed – like, Disney has been allowing important things to matter. They've allowed Han to die. They've allowed Luke to die in this one. Uh, They had the courage to stick to their guns with – Leia actually living through this movie when they could mm-hmm. have easily killed her off. I appreciate the fact that they let them go forward with the original vision. And, um, yeah, it just, 
it had a lot of heft to it. Kylo Ren is probably the most single, most interesting villain in the Star Wars movie that we have ever seen. He's terrifying. He's unpredictable. He's sympathetic. You get where he's coming from, but are not on his side at all. Mm -hmm. It's just, they did a whole lot right for me. And it it almost made me uh, the biggest Star Wars fan I had been in many years. This is the one that got me really excited about where to go. And I compare this to The Empire Strikes Back because everyone does. Unlike The Empire Strikes Back, I didn't feel like they were pulling any punches here. Empire yeah. Strikes Back, they didn't kill Han. They just kind of said, oh, he is frozen and carried yeah. away. Whereas this one was like, no, we're going to pretend this is, and this might be a detriment, and I know a lot of people are saying it is. I felt like they were saying, you know what? Let's not hold back. Let's do everything. Let's kill Snoke. Let's have the First Order, or the, the First Order, the, the Resistance be like on the brink of extinction. Yeah, let's yeah. let's let's make these stakes even bigger and actually follow through in a way to where the next film will be even more impactful because they will have risen up. And I apologize if you hear a truck, but there's a truck out there doing some garbage stuff. <laughs> um, that happened on Los Fanboys last time. They're they're coming over here like fucking six days a week with that trash. <laughs> anyway, uh, I just didn't. Uh, I felt more than anything that they had real balls to do whatever they they felt was best for the story and they i didn't feel like they were going like bowing down to fans and on their knees saying oh you want this here take this have more of this here bring us your money it was more like no i am a filmmaker i have a great idea for a story and i will make stuff that has lasting impact on the franchise going forward and it was a move they didn't have to have because everyone expected this to be a middle chapter movie that was darker but set things up for the next one. But he wanted to make a full, complete experience to me. And I just thought that was so incredibly inspir- like, inspiring for me. Like, I just, I love this movie. Do you have fear? Cause I, I got this fear that episode nine, we're going to spend a lot of time um, maybe, I don't, I don't want to say correcting episode eight, but I've, I've got this fear that... That's what they're going to do. There, there's going to be, oh, well, Kylo was lying about Ray's parents. Oh, well, this was going on. First and, of all, and Kylo do you, do you did not say that's anything. Happen? I don't, I'm not thinking about the next movie, honestly. Okay. I just, for me, as a standalone movie, this is very strong. This is, to me, a very strong movie. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it's worth saying that Kylo Ren actually didn't say that uh, Ray's parents were nobody. Ray actually said that Ray's parents were nobody. Yeah, he, he agrees just, with her. He just agreed with her. But as far as as me worrying about them backpedaling on some of the revelations in Last Jedi, uh, maybe they'll do that. I'm not really concerned. I think I have faith in J.J. Abrams enough to know he's not going to do that. He's not a director to really wallow in the past. He's always trudging forward. Um, and I don't mean like he's always looking forward to the next project. I mean like if you watch his stories, they're always going forward without almost any time to breathe. So I can't imagine he'll spend a whole lot of time backpedaling and dwelling on things that don't need to be dwelled on. Because he does not dwell on his stories. I'm not sure if you notice. Almost to a fault. And um, yeah, I just don't think it's a problem. But as far as judging this movie by itself as of this point, to me is a, a near perfect example of taking risks with a story with a franchise that really shouldn't be taking risks because it's such a big one yeah uh i just love the fact that they really have the guts to do something so ball like i said i said this before ballsy it's just a ballsy movie um yeah. for better or worse be and uh canto bite like i know i understand the complaints of canto bite i can see the shades of the prequels in there as well especially with the cg aspect but thematically with finn uh, I see how it works into his story. I like the fact that it, it brings forth the idea that not everyone in the resistance is good. It's like mm-hmm. a gray area. These guys are benefiting from both sides. It's not about what side you're on. It's just like, it, don't join, like you said. He, he's basically the, the other alien, or the other alien. The other, he's a demon on Finn's shoulder, and then the, the angel is Rose, I guess. And it's kind of like they're two different philosophies. And it, it's about how the, all of those, his, his experiences in this movie shape what he ultimately becomes at the end of this movie. And I think it's very powerful, um, even if it's a little bit, um, even if it feels unnecessary. People say Canto Bite is unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's super important because it, it's another instance for me of this movie having balls because it has balls to have uh, maybe a third of the movie 
culminate in something that fails. Yeah. We don't see enough of people trying things and failing. We're too used to seeing them succeed all the time. And uh, I like seeing like the the fact like, oh, shit, how can we make this harder by having them just fail? And not only that, yes, they fail, but ultimately it still results in things getting worse because mm-hmm. it's because of them bringing DJ with them that the uh, resistance gets found out by the First Order that they're offloading their people to a nearby planet and ends up getting you know most of the resistance killed. So it do- it is not without consequence. It has consequences in the negative. Um and again, this is, goes to show this this universe has consequences. The universe has impact, and they're just because they're beholden <clears throat> to a canon does not necessarily mean they're not going to take any more risks. Yeah. And maybe maybe I'm biased in that way, where I just like the idea of Disney allowing their storytellers to take risks with properties. You mentioned your big problem with the uh, with the uh, the new novels and stuff is that they they don't have anything with impact. Nothing at all. They're Which so. Is, I yeah. think they're they're afraid to do anything that will be holding them in these movies. I think if that makes sense. The the movies, if they were truly Disney fied, could have fallen into that same pitfall, but they are not. Mm-hmm. And I love the fact that they're not. And I think this movie is sort of a testament to that. So there are many reasons why I love this movie. That is is I think in a nutshell kind of the, the meat and bones as to why I feel that way. But yeah, what do you think? I know it's like your number six. But. Yeah, it was it was down there, and like I said, there's there's a lot of things that I like, a lot of things that I hate. Um, I will say that the only way to win a war is by killing the enemy. Um, that's just been my experience. Like I said, I got military family, and when you fight a war, you kill the bad guys. You don't love them, you you kill the bad guys. So take that, Rose. No, <laughs> I was like, that's not at all what she's saying. But anyway, I know. I'm just I just wanted to throw that out there. I got what she was saying. Um, I when it comes to when it comes to Canto Bite, when it comes to some of the character choices, I get your appreciation of failure. I get your appreciation of the taking the risks. Um, I, I just, I think there was ways to do what they wanted to do, but do it better. And sometimes I feel like, like the chase scene. I, you're telling me that they can't send their Tie Fighters after them. You're telling me they can't. Uh, jump some of the ships ahead of the rebel ships and catch them on both ends. There were some story things to me, and and, and again, it's it's bias or maybe it's the 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 burden of knowledge, I guess. Because and again, I'm not trying to sound like a braggart, but I know a lot of Star Wars stuff. Yes, it's uh, informed by movies, books, games, comics, all of this stuff. But even the, I mean, I've got like the essential guide to vehicles and technology and aliens and worlds. Like I even bought those books. And uh, there was just certain things in the story where I'm like, I know Star Wars can do this. I know ships can do this. I know characters can do this. Why didn't they? And so some of that stuff upset me. But I I completely get why uh, it means what it means to you. A hundred percent. And there's something else I'm realizing uh, as a film lover of something I like. And I mentioned this in the Last of Those Fanboys podcast, which doesn't matter because this is going to be released a while later. But um, <laughs> in a Los Fanboys podcast, it's that I, uh, I appreciate when filmmakers take risks, mm-hmm. even if they stumble. Uh, that's why I enjoyed Batman v Superman. That's why I enjoy the Wachowski stuff. So, like, that's probably an inherent bias. That being said, with I think... The Last Jedi sticks the landing on virtually every front. This is not an instance of me being like, yeah, I like, I appreciate the fact that they did this, even though they stumbled. For yeah. me, I, I don't think, I don't think Ryan Johnson stumbled. I think this was a fantastic film. Okay. Uh, well, let's continue on. Uh, we've only got uh, one left for you and two left for me. So my number two is the original, A New Hope. No, I have, I have two left. Wait, do I have two left? No, I don't. I have yeah, one left. One my left. bad. Yeah. I'm keeping track here. This is my show. My bad. I know you're the my boss, bad. I am so me. sorry. <laughs> well, it's because literally on my notebook page, I yeah. have I have Star Wars: The Last Jedi at number three, and then mm-hmm. The Empire Strikes Back. I'm showing this to you at number two. Yeah. But when I wrote that down, I thought that doesn't feel right. I'm yeah. just writing that because I feel like I should have The Empire Strikes Back higher than The Last yeah. Jedi. So what it is, it's literally just an arrow of switching between them. So I just <laughs> forgot where we were. Yeah, it's so all that, good. that's where that came from. It's all good. I got this. It's all right. <laughs> all right, keep, keep going. Keep going. 
<laughs> so Star Wars A New Hope is my number two. Um, it's the original. It, it set a standard for science fiction. Up until this point, the majority of science fiction was, was campy. Nobody took it serious. Uh, Star Trek was campy. Your Buck Rogers was campy. I, I, science fiction was this thing. Or for, try. Yeah, or try, yeah. Uh, Star Wars was this thing, or science fiction was this thing that certain people were into, and it wasn't meant for general audiences. And Star Wars broke that wall down. And they said, anybody can come in, be a part of this world, and enjoy it. If you like action and adventure, we got you. You like science fiction, we got you. You like a fantasy feel for types of things, we got you. Come in and check it out. Um, it is, like I said earlier, a standalone movie. You, If, if uh, Star Wars had not been successful, A New Hope can stand on its own. It's a good film on its own. Uh, it is it is probably the one I've seen the most, even though I rank another movie above it. Uh, it I can probably say it's the one that I've watched the most. Uh, I don't always make it through a trilogy viewing where I go back and I watch all three of the OT, uh, but I definitely at least make it through that first one. This um, is definitely, I've seen it the most as well. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, look, you got such a cool... You got a cool opening with this giant spaceship getting shot at coming across the screen. The even bigger spaceship shooting at it coming across the screen. Your first character introduction basically is robots, droids. And that's pretty cool. That's different. That's unique. We already know that we're not on a Earth-based world anymore. You know, we're, we're taking a step beyond when the first characters we really have an interaction with are a couple of droids. And then Darth Vader's entrance is so grand and you're you're sitting here thinking who is this big dude uh looks scary and and then i mean it just it goes off from there we get introduced to the farm boy uh, we get introduced to the force through obi-wan kenobi uh we get to see the cd underground at the cantina oh that seems like a good place to plug my uh column there check out every thursday the cantina yeah yeah it's good <laughs> stuff anyways uh so we get to see the cd underground we meet han solo we go on this amazing space chase and then we we see the death star blow up a planet and we we realize like you said there's some consequences here this lady that we're just now meeting princess leia she's she's lost her whole planet and then the whole rescue scene is fun. We get Leia, you know, hey, somebody's got to save our butts or uh, somebody's got to save us. Uh, strong female character type right there. Uh, long before that phrase was even uttered. And it's it's an exciting film. Uh, the Death Star battle is great. Uh, dog fighting, TIE fighters and X-Wings. And then Luke hears a voice in his head and tells him to pull the trigger. He does it. The Death Star blows up. It's it's. It's exciting from beginning to end. I mean, I just described the whole movie. I didn't mean to, but I <laughs> I loved it. I loved every moment of seeing that movie. I, and like I said, the first time I ever saw that movie, you know, I was born in 85, so I didn't get to see it in theaters, but I can remember watching it on, uh, my parents had recorded it from HBO or something. And that was my first experience with Star Wars. And it it is to this day, one of the most important moments in my life involving some sort of media uh, it's informed so many relationships and and my own tastes and and film and stories I, I i can't say enough good stuff about it yeah well star wars a new hope is my number one choice mm -hmm. uh so i i'm equally as passionate about this as you are it is uh I think it was the first live action movie I actually ever liked because when I was young, I want to say maybe I was four or five or something when I first saw it, maybe younger. And I, I was all about cartoons, you know, fuck live action. That's boring adult shit. <laughs> Don't want to see that. Um, and I remember my friend saying, oh, it's Star Wars or my cousin. And I was like, that sounds boring. Sounds like an adult thing. And uh, I don't want to watch that. But then we, we threw it on and I was just instantly sucked into this world and the rest of my life is just history. This is this is archetypal storytelling at its strongest and at its most uh, basic in a good way. You know, as a storyteller in general, just like the ability that you're able to rely on these very basic archetypes and create something so compelling is one of the most interesting things to me uh, in the entire world. And how it just it just man he managed to capture something that. Uh, no one else had, you know, turned, as you mentioned, science fantasy or science fiction into 
something that's palatable for mainstream audiences. How did we not think of that in the future of taking these archetypal things and putting it over with the science fiction or science fantasy skin to, to create such a relatable and such a uh, universal story? It just it's How did that not happen before? I don't understand it, uh, but I'm happy it happened, obviously. And it's it's spawned generations and generations of fans and inspirations and everything else in the making. So I adore this movie. I, it's probably the one I've watched the most mm -hmm. um, in many different iterations, many different special editions, many different original editions. You know, I've seen this. Yeah. In, I don't know. I, I've seen it so many times to the point where I know it verbatim um, pretty much. And I, I'm almost bored watching it nowadays. So... It's a great movie. What can I say other than it started it all? It was amazing. It's still one of the most infinitely rewatchable movies in the entire franchise, uh, even if it is a little bit slow by yeah. today's standards. But if it was not a universe we were familiar with, I probably wouldn't feel that way. But yeah, yeah. great movie. Did Good you, job, George Lucas. Yes, yes. And thank you for that one. Thank you. Uh, did you get the chance to watch the special edition in theaters? Hells in yeah, I did. Okay. Oh, that yeah. was... That was pretty special for me. I, I remember when those were first announced and being able to, because like I said, I was born after all three of the originals had come out. I didn't get a chance to, and in, in, or close. When did Jedi come out? Uh, in, in special edition? No, regular. The original. Uh, 83? Okay, so yeah, I was, I was born. Yeah, 77, 80, and then 83, right? Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, so yeah, seeing this, seeing them in theaters was was pretty cool for me. Um, did anybody take you to see the special edition in theaters, or is that something you went and did on your own or with? Friends? I think it was my. I think it was my mom. Okay. Yeah, my mom very took cool. me and my sister. They're very. And cool. they were not nearly as infatuated with it as I. <laughs> it was. It was an event, man. I can remember all the all the posters. I can remember. I think Dr. Well, I know Dr. Pepper did stuff for the prequel movies. I can't remember if they did stuff for the special edition, but all the re-release of the toys and everything, the novelizations, everything was great. They, yep. they launched everything else. I remember those, they did a really good job with the branding where they had yes. like the gold plated yes. special edition things which mm -hmm. is, Oh my God, they were so pretty. Um, did they have, they had a bunch of like Burger King toys and stuff as well that were, yep. I think they were Burger King. Something um, like that. Some like that, where they they gold plated stuff really bled out into all of the merchandise, and it's yep. just, it's probably one of the the best looking pieces of merchandise in general I've seen based off of that. So, and and I remember the books having the the imprint on it as well. Yeah, yeah, it was it was great. It was one of those things. So let's go ahead and wrap this up with my number one, which is the only one left uh, for my list: uh, The Empire Strikes Back. Mm -hmm. uh, we spoke in depth about it, so I'll just touch on a couple more things. Uh, like I said, you know, it feeds into Return of the Jedi. You weren't quite as satisfied with the payoff as I was, which is fine. It does have that that iconic moment. No, I am your father. Uh, blindsided a lot of people. You said that you don't think it would necessarily make as much sense these days. It would make sense, but I feel like it's a. Uh... It's it's kind of like how John Carter of Mars is basically doesn't hold up today because it mm -hmm. set the standard. That's basically this. Okay. It's it's so cliche to the point where it's like you roll your eyes at that more than you actually, you know, care. Yeah. It's just like it's almost like someone nowadays would be like after watching the first one, ha! Wouldn't it be funny if if Darth Vader was the father? And you'd be like, shut up! That's fucking stupid. <laughs> like that makes no sense. And then it happens. Yeah. I guess I guess I can see something like that. Um, I, I like I said Hoth. Hoth was great. Such a great intro. Uh, Luke going and finding the uh, the Wampa. Um, the, how did you feel when they versus the original where you don't get to see the beast? Versus I kind of like the original more. I, I, when I was younger, I liked the fact that he added it mm -hmm. um, because you know you finally get to understand what's going on more. Uh, but the original was a lot creepier. I can see where it was creepier, but I don't feel like some people I know that really irked them. Like it removes such a scary, it didn't, it was creepier and it kind of heightened the, uh, intensity, not being able to see it, uh, in its entirety. But I don't think the special edition completely removed it, but I, will I don't think, I don't think it ruined it by yeah. adding in. I, I don't think I could, I could see why they added it. I think it's more accessible Yeah, and less distracting like you're less distracted by the filmmaking when you actually see it because it's it's more 
uh, I guess, what you expect. And it's more scary because you actually see him chewing on a carcass. Yeah, which is weird and kind of yeah. dark. Which Very dark. Empire Strikes Back as a yeah. dark film. Uh, I'll tell you one one thing. Uh, you watch Robot Chicken? Uh, I have. Which which ones? Uh, ha- have you seen the one, uh, all of the Star Wars ones, but uh, specifically there's a scene where the Wampa that Luke cut the arm off of mm-hmm. meet, uh, comes to a gas station that Luke Skywalker is at refueling his X-Wing. And the Wampa is trying to drive a stick spaceship with one arm <laughs> and he drops his keys. And it is it is literally one of the most sad and disturbing clips of Robot Chicken ever. And whenever I watch it, it, it almost makes me uncomfortable. It's so it's, sad. <laughs> I think another one they did was where they had that one guy who reached over to Luke in the, the cantina. Mm-hmm. Right before the guy says he doesn't like you. It's like yes, he's, he's actually... like an artist or an architect... I think or something. He was like, Oh my God, I love something. Like I love your something. And and he thought he was attacking him. Yeah. And he was just like, no, I'm not saying that. And then he gets his arm cut off. Yep. And he goes back and he can't draw houses anymore because the arm that was cut off was his dominant hand. Yep. Yep. (laughs) So there's a lot of uh, loss of arms and, and stuff in star Wars, you know? Oh yeah. Proud tradition. Yes. Um, So yeah, empire strikes back. It's, there's a lot of people. It is number one. Um, it's definitely, I think everybody out there, it's in their, their top three. I don't think anybody doesn't have at least two of the original trilogy in their top three. Um, I, f- I kind of like you, I felt obligated to put yeah. Empire Strikes Back up pretty high. And I think some of that's informed by nostalgia of the movie and some of the shocking moments, while they don't necessarily carry as much weight today, those shocking moments and the Yoda stuff uh, the scene in the in the dark side cave, if you will, where Luke, you know, battles that image of Vader and it's him inside the in the mask. Uh, all of that stuff just just gives this great contrast to A New Hope, which was really light and fun and exciting. And then Empire Strikes Back just it did dare to be different. I really felt it dared to be different. And I will I will forever forever be able to make jokes uh revolving around the empire strikes back based on my son's name and uh so i can't wait for uh embarrassing moments for him which which your son's name lucas okay so i can definitely do a luke i am your father type bit with oh boy yeah that is such a dad i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna make him cringe so bad because Let's face it, you know, we go through stuff with our parents for, you know, 17 to, to 19 years, and the only thing we can look forward to is doing that to our kids. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I, I will agree with you. Like, Empire Strikes Back, it dared to be different. It could have easily been a movie that is just, like, <clears throat> more of the same. Yep. But it, it actually had something more that it wanted to say, more it wanted to put its characters through, and more it wanted to develop. And uh, that's that's, like, the best thing we could ask for in a sequel. Oh, yeah, definitely. And it's one thing a lot of sequels don't do. you got a lot mm-hmm. of sequels out there that just either, A, try to do more of the same, or they have drastic changes that make no sense. And it's not just like a theme change. It's a complete like genre change or, or a complete story where they ignore everything that happened in the first one. And Empire Strikes Back didn't do that. It's, 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 it takes place after the, the mighty Empire has received its first major defeat and it's coming back with a vengeance. And how cool was that Super Star Destroyer when you first see it? I mean, that was just wicked. But yeah, so Empire Strikes Back. That's my number one. And dear God, we made it. We're at the end. For we're a while, I was end. like, holy shit, we're going. This is this is a thing. <laughs> it's two hours long. But I guess, yes. uh, what would I expect? We're going through ten movies, one by one. Yes, and ten of the most important movies ever to exist in cinema. Um, me and you were talking about it earlier. It's kind of crazy. You think George Lucas did six movies. Disney's already done four, yeah. uh, with one more to come out next year. Uh, we know they're going to slow down on these movies, which I'm fine with. Uh, if you were to pick a, either a time period or maybe borrow a story for the next star Wars story, the next spinoff, what era or what type of story would you like to see be told? Something completely far away from where we've been and something completely in a different area that we haven't seen before. So far into the future, removed. Just take the spirit of Star Wars and run with it. Don't take any of the threads of the Empire, Resistance, or First Order. Go far away from that. Um, 
you could go to the past as well, but I worry that in doing that, you try to tie things back into the future. I want something, just take the spirit of Star Wars and tell us a story through that. Maybe take some of the races, but don't don't rely too heavily on the Resistance Rebel yeah. First Order Empire dynamic. I think that's, I'm realizing more and more I don't want more of that. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to go anywhere. Anywhere else completely. I don't want a Knights of the Old Republic. I don't want... Like, if people say, oh, tell us this story, tell us this story, I'm like, give me something I don't know I want, and tell it well. Yeah. I, would, I wouldn't mind something very, very, very far into the past, dealing with uh, maybe the rise of Jedi and Sith. Uh, either the first Sith War, the hyperspace war type stuff from the EU. I think there's a lot of good stuff. I don't want Reven. I don't want Bane. I don't want Plagueis. I want, like you said, something that is that might be inspired by existing story, but not connected too much so thousands and thousands of years in the past or thousands and thousands of years in the future um i'm good on either either end of that spectrum uh just, i think go ahead i think my big problem with like a lot of things where it's like oh tell us about the story of this like the first jedi that do this or this and that and, and people get caught up on i want to see these events play out when you it's hard in a movie when movies tend to be so character focused overall mm -hmm. as you start creating a story it becomes less about the things that happen and more about the character's journey and when you make it about the character's journey you tend to emphasize the events a lot less and it always ends up becoming something that people have problems with you know yeah. the force like it's the force awakens how it didn't deal with the the logic of Coruscant being moved or whatever like yeah it, like there were a lot of places where people were like wait I don't understand how this ties into this 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 and this and this and it's like well they weren't telling the story of that 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 and that so it wasn't really important to the story um, so that's why I think telling stories in places people already know stuff is dangerous because you're never going to be able to hit the bullet points that they yeah. want without it feeling contrived and silly yeah I can see that. Uh, well, the next thing that we got up besides the movie is uh, John Favreau's show, The Mandalorian, ah, which looks exciting. That is the most exciting project ever. I am, I can't express how excited I am. It looks and so it, different and fun and gritty. And it's not in between episodes three and four. <laughs> it is not. I forgot when and where it is. Where is it it's again? Between, it's it? between six and seven. It's six after the seven. fall of the Empire before the rise of the First Order, so... And that's cool. I mean, when you when you've got these uh, these show, I you know this this money to throw out a TV show. Let's 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 tell something not as known. Let's. It's a huge galaxy that Star Wars exists in. There's there's more to it than the Skywalkers and the Solos. So I'm down with it. Well, any last words to say on the uh, ten Star Wars movies? I'm excited to see where. The franchise goes going forward. I am a bit worried that fans are going to feel entitled for their uh, outrage to be heated. Um, I like to think that Lucasfilm is going to keep going forth with their current plan, even if they're slowing down. I don't mind slowing down. I just don't want yeah. them to take less risks as a result of the backlash against Star Wars The Last Jedi. And uh, yeah, I just hope they keep putting out good movies, keep doing what you do. Um, yeah, keep doing it, Disney. I, I've loved all... I've really liked, I should say. I shouldn't say I've loved. I've really liked all the movies that you put out so far. They're all better than most of what George Lucas has put out. Um, so yeah, keep it on keeping on. All right, boss man. Where can everybody find you at online? You can find me at Jam the Writer on Twitter. And of course, you can see all of our articles at lmonline.com. All right, and you guys can find me on Twitter at that Kyle Malone. And like I said, check out my column on Star Wars, everything about Star Wars, the Cantina, every Thursday. And for this video, make sure you hit the likes and the bells and the shares and, and whatever else you can click on. Go to our website, click on it 10 times. And uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Adios.